Number 1. Mites A certain species of female mites called Adactylidium would have her offspring mate inside of her own body. So, yes, the sisters and brothers mate inside the mother. Keep in mind, there can be up to 50 to 100 siblings all mating with each other inside the mother. Due to all of this activity, this can cause the mother to swell up and eventually cause her to explode to death. The craziest part is the males die before they can even get the chance to leave the womb. This is because they already served their purpose and made it to death. The female mites get the chance to leave their dead mother's carcasses and explore the world, only for them to eventually consume an egg of their own and the process then repeats. Consume, internal orgy, explosion, death, repeat. Sweet home Alabama. Number 2. Ferrets. Male ferrets would bite the back of the female ferret's neck and often bully the female into releasing eggs. People who own ferrets would often sometimes see the male ferret mauling the female in the cage, completely bodying her like a WWE cage match. This mating ritual is often described as vigorous, loud, and violent, as sometimes the female ferrets would make a screaming noise. You would think it would be easy for the females to get away, but nah, the males have a hook-like penis, so even if a human tries to separate this WWE cluster f of a mating ritual, they would be doing more harm than good. But the male ferrets don't beat the hell out of the female ferrets for no reason. You see, the female ferrets can only ovulate through a process known as induced ovulation. In this process, the female ferret ovulates in response to the physical stimulation provided by the mating act itself rather than in response to hormonal changes. So, the males have absolutely no choice but to commit domestic violence on their female counterparts to have a chance at mating. Number 3. Hippos Hippos incorporate urine and feces into their mating rituals. Kinky. Both male and female hippos will release large quantities of urine and feces while in the water, creating a cloud of cancerous stench that serves as a form of communication. Sometimes the male hippo would do this super cool move called the helicopter. This involves the male hippo spinning its tail, causing urine and feces to fly everywhere far and wide. The more dookie, the better the riz. If the female hippo is impressed by this, she would answer by showing the male hippo her feces. This form of flirting would then lead to the main action. Once a pair of hippos has paired off for mating, the male will approach the female from behind and mount her in the dirty water. Mating can be quite vigorous, involving splashing and vocalizations from both individuals. After mating, the pair may engage in further displays of affection such as exchanging more dookie with each other or vocalizing. Number 4. Earwig Mites Ear mite called the Dirocules phalaenodictes made by finding a host like a moth. The female ear mite would then go into the moth's ear, causing the moth to become deaf in one ear. The mite will then begin to lay eggs inside the moth's ear. Once the eggs hatch, the brothers and sisters will begin to mate with each other in unison inside the mother's ear. As always, for whatever reason, the males will typically die after the mating process is complete. The dead males stay in the ear, while the females leave the ear to perhaps find another moth of their own to repeat the process. What's kind of cool is that the female mites who leave the ear would leave behind a certain type of pheromone, helping future mites determine what ear to go into in case they want to mate inside the same moth's ear again. They typically only make one ear deaf so the moth can stay alive and use part of its hearing senses. Without the moth being alive, there would be no host to mate inside. Imagine if one of these things got in your ear and had an orgy inside your eardrum, leaving behind dead males and pheromones for the process to repeat at a later time. Don't worry though, this doesn't happen to humans. I hope. Number 5. Otters Otters are some of the most downright diabolical, devious, demonic creatures I've ever heard of. These things are worse than ducks and that's saying something that ducks are worth their counterparts. You see, Otters' as mating behaviors can be shockingly violent, with males resorting to aggression, including holding females underwater, biting their faces, and forcibly subduing them. This hyper-aggressive sexual culture has been found to result in a significant amount of deaths among southern sea female otters, often due to trauma or drowning. Disturbingly, some males even target pups that have not yet reached sexual maturity. Furthermore, these behaviors extend beyond their species, with reports of male sea otters engaging in violent 
forced copulation with baby harbor seals, resulting in fatal outcomes due to the aggressive nature of the encounters. And, just when you thought they couldn't get any worse, Sea otters have been observed engaging in necrophilia, with males persistently mating with the carcasses of dead otters. Moreover, otters are not only aggressive in their mating habits, but also display a propensity for killing other animals, as evidenced by incidents where otters have drowned and even consumed small monkeys in zoo exhibits. The otters need a new software update. Number 6. Neotrogla curvata Neotrogla curvata is a unique species of cave-dwelling insect found in Brazil. The thing with this insect is its mating habits is… I don't know, an uno reverse card you can say. In this species, the female possesses a structure resembling a penis, but it's not a penis, it's a vagina that looks like a penis. You see, the female stick vagina thing actually pegs the male and collects the male sperm. You might be asking, do the males have a penis? Not exactly. In order for the female to collect the sperm in the male, the male must ejaculate within himself. Yes, the males literally bust a load internally, and the females use their penis vagina structure thing to peg the males and scoop out the sperm. It is often heavily debated on whether or not the female penis thing should actually be called a penis. People often say the correct wording should be penis structure, rather than just saying she has a penis itself, but I don't know, it's however you want to look at it. Number 7. Giraffes These colorful living light poles oftentimes would drink the pee from their female counterparts to see if she's ready to mate or not. You see, giraffes possess a specialized sense of smell that allows them to detect pheromones in urine, providing valuable information about the reproductive status of females. By drinking the urine of various females, males can assess their fertility and choose suitable partners for mating. Sometimes the giraffes would even swing their heads or kick against the female bladder just to get her to pee. Essentially, giraffes are out here pulling off a Gordon Ramsay doing taste tests and smell tests just to determine the status update on his female counterpart moods. This behavior is known as urine sampling, and to be fair, there are a multitude of animals that do this, but giraffes are too tall, so typically the pee has to go into their mouths in order to get a proper full nose whiff of every urine from every female around the block. Imagine asking your girlfriend to pee in your mouth just so you can determine if she's in the mood or not. Number 8. Drone Bees Bro, drone bees literally get their penis ripped out of their body causing their abdomen to get split open. Check this out. A young queen bee mates only once. The mating ritual starts with her taking something called a nuptial flight. In this, she would fly in the air and mate with about 10 to 20 drone bees. During this process, the drone bee would grip onto her and insert his endophallus or bee penis in layman's terms. He would then begin to release semen, but this act is not without sacrifice. As each ejaculation concludes, the male's endophallus is ripped from his body, splitting open his abdomen. The drone bee then falls to the ground as his final resting place, but let's say the drone bee survives the mating flight. If a drone bee has survived the mating flight, he would then be kicked out from the beehive since his sole purpose of mating was fulfilled. Since drone bees don't have any stingers or any other valuable usage besides mating, the hive sends them an eviction notice. Hmm, and I thought I had it hard. Number 9. Male Gardener Snake Male gardener snake mating can be quite the spectacle. When a male spots a potential mate, he doesn't waste any time. He'll start by charming her with some slick moves or by gathering his buddies to form a circle around her, showcasing his interest in the most dramatic way possible. But here's where it gets really wild. As more males catch wind of the action, they can't resist joining the party. This causes more snakes to end up fighting and vying for the attention of the coveted female. This then turns into a big pile of snakes all balled up or tangled with each other and the female somewhere deep in the pile. Somehow, in the midst of all this chaotic mating cluster, the female finds herself in quite a predicament tasked with the decision of choosing a perfect match from the doses of snakes piled on and around her. This cartoon-ass mating style is straight up chaotic, man. Once the female snake makes a decision, the male will then align his cloaca with hers, allowing for the transfer of sperm. This process, known as cloacal contact, enables fertilization to occur internally. After mating, the female may move away to find a suitable location to lay her eggs, while the male may continue to display protective behaviors or seek out other potential mates. Number 10. Clownfish 
If you saw the movie Finding Nemo, let's just say after this you will never see that movie the same again. When a female clownfish dies, her mate, often the father of the family, undergoes a remarkable transformation. He transitions into a female, a process known as protandrous hermaphroditism and assumes the role of the dominant breeding individual within the group. This change is irreversible and the newly transformed female would then pair with one of the remaining males in the group, often one of her offspring. So, in the world of Finding Nemo, Nemo's mom along with the siblings was attacked and killed, leaving only Nemo and Martin, Nemo's father. If Nemo never ran away, Martin would have turned into a female fish and began to mate with Nemo. Alternatively, if Nemo ran away and came back, he wouldn't be meeting his dad but perhaps his now new mom. Let me know if this ruined your childhood. Thank you all for coming to my TED Talk, and remember, knowledge is power! Knowledge!